Good morning, Stephen. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing good. I am Stephanie. Um, for those that, that don't know, I'm Stephanie, and this is my um, online book club. Had a book club for about a year uh, at a coffee shop, and now I've been doing it online for a few months. I, my, the purpose of this is to introduce authors, uh, to help them to bring out their books to more people. Uh, and to talk about their books. So thank you, Stephen, for joining Love Misunderstood Online Book Club. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. You are so welcome. I'm so excited about this interview um, and the things that Stephen will share. So Stephen, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, um, first and foremost, um, I'm a child of God. Um, I'm also a child of a wonderful woman who uh, uh, made her transition about 10 years ago, but she definitely pushed me in the direction of what I'm doing now in terms of uh, writing. Um, so I'm definitely proud to say that I'm, I'm, I'm the child of a wonderful woman named Vivian Kim Tockenhall. Also, um, I'm an author, as you just mentioned, uh, four books now. Um, and those titles include Mail on Thursday, uh, Hospital Me Potty, A Mother's Christmas Gift, which happens to be my personal favorite. And of course, this year we, been, we began with uh, Valentine's Therapy for Valentine's 2020. And so, yeah, and I'm also a new uncle. <laughs> Yay, being an uncle is awesome, isn't it? It is, it is, it is. <laughs> Congratulations, Uncle Steven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well. So tell us a little bit, tell us about uh, your first book. Um, before you tell us about the book, I'm sorry, uh, would you tell us when you discovered you wanted to be an author? Uh, what was that like? Um, when, what happened? What were you doing? Um, I want to say, well, I, I, I got to start from the beginning because you okay. know, I, okay. I, I started off with, um, you know, children's books like um, uh, Arthur, Mark Brown. Yeah. And um, I started off with him and his series and, and then to see his book series become the national, um, excuse me, international um, uh, cartoon uh, phenomenon that it is, it was really like, wow, okay. But it, it started there because I always admired how authors were able to take the, um, you know, take what they have on the inside and bring it alive to touch other people. So that that was the humble beginning. And my mom started me on the author series. But to make a long story short, um, I, as an author, I, I mean, I, when I felt compelled um, and moved to write a uh, write a book, it. It had to be after I read um, uh, a famous 1986 um, musical memoir by one of the legendary su uh, Supremes. Um, when I read her book, it was very, it, it kind of solidified everything that I wanted, um, I felt. Um, so I, I kind of felt like, you know, that moment was the moment of clarity. Um, it was my moment of, of, of epiphany, and it just was my moment to kind of push me into that direction. It literally gave me, by reading that book, it was like, you have to do this. Yes. And since reading that book, um, I, I just felt like, okay, like, I know I can do this. So yes. that was my definite push. That is very neat, a very neat story. You never know... Um, what is going to uh, get to you? What is going to, uh, <laughs> when you're going through stages of life, you never know what direction, the, you know, the full direction that it's going in. So, you know, walking by faith is, is what that is. You're just walking and then one day all of a sudden, oh, that's why that had to happen. Oh, that's why that needed to happen. And so it's yeah. awesome that you started out reading children's books and that your mom is the one that inspired it because after that, you know, after that, I know that she continued to inspire some other uh, things in you. And so we'll talk about that in a little bit. 
So what are, what are some of the things that you do to prepare for writing when you're writing your books? One of the most things um, I, I do to kind of prep would definitely, I have to separate myself from other, you know, outside um, uh, influences. Mm -hmm. I have to kind of get still. And generally before that, um, there is an idea that's already been brewing like coffee. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like there would be something, there, there would have been some sort of an encounter that I have that I've made or I may have uh, read about or something, but uh, but the, that's the norm of my prep is getting away, trying to channel all my thoughts and trying to and and, and that that would be my prep is number one stepping away and uh, getting into a quiet place because you got to have a quiet place because if you're not because everyone. Uh, everyone who doesn't realize what it takes to kind of get our thoughts together, you know, this is, it's just very essential for the author. So I would say step away. And then of course, you know, I, I couldn't do any of this without God. You know, I have to pray. Um, you have to pray. You have to, um, you know, uh, sacrifice. Uh, and uh, definitely that's uh, my process. And I just try to and the main thing I, I, I do and make sure is making sure that it's built and uh, giving hope. That's my main, that, that is the anchor of what it is that I, uh, that I do is make, making sure that whatever that um, storyline that God's given me is that it's, it, it's built in hope. And so that would be the foundation. And so just by, you know, um, my prayer time, I definitely have to, you know, fast and, um, you know, just trying to, you know, uh, receive what I can from him. And so that would be my prep, uh, definitely. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So now I want to ask you, how many books have you written? Uh, currently four. <laughs> and currently how, four. go ahead. Oh, I'll just currently four. <laughs> okay. And so how long did it take you to write those four books? Um, the duration, well, they kind of each had their unique timeline um, yes. of, for uh, writing. Um, the first one, um, the first one uh, goes back to 2017. Yes, 2017. And um, I, I, I'll, you know, that was about, a year and some change uh, for, you know, writing. Um, that one, yeah, that was about a year and some change. The second one, I was blessed to do in about maybe a six-month span. And then, of course, uh, my Christmas book was about um, two months. And and then, of course, Valentine's kind of just happened at the last moment. But, but they have different duration periods. And they definitely um, lead me in places that I don't really expect to go, but they kind of, that is required of me. So each one I've done has been its own unique duration of time length and, you know, trying to put it together. So that's about my, um, that's been my experience thus far. That's awesome. So I didn't ask you that question right. Thanks. Thank you for giving, you know, the answer that you gave um, because you talked about each individual book. So now I'm asking you collectively, <laughs> and that's the way I should have said it, but, and again, thanks for it. So collectively, how long did it take you one year to write all of those books uh, together? All four of those books, how long has it been? A year, two years all together? Perhaps. Uh, I want to say two or more. Okay. Two or more. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is amazing to have written that many books in that short period of time. And I know that you had to stay really focused, you know, in order to get those completed. And so that is great. I admire that. So tell us what is the name of the first book? Uh, my first book is called Mail on Thursday. 
Okay. And so tell us a little bit about what that book is about. That book um, was began uh, out of, you know, kind of like a cathartic, you know, um, you know, uh, remedy for me. It was basically about, um, uh, I had I have met someone who I just was like, oh God, <laughs> you know, somebody, you know how you meet, you know how you meet someone and you kind of like, oh, like you're instantly just oh, da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but make a long story short, um, I had met someone in 2017, and I was, I mean, when I tell you that I was um, head over heels, it was. And it was a head over heel situation, and um, and I'm still fortunate to have met the 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 subject of that uh, book. I'm very fortunate to have met uh, uh, such a kind person, a wonderful human being. But to make a long story short, um, it is about you know it, it came from cathartic uh, purposes, and I have not seen um, you know my you know big you know heart. <laughs> I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen each other since 2017. And so, um, it, because of the circumstances that kind of went along the way, um, it was very, um, um, I, I kind of really felt um, like I wanted to, all the things I wanted to say are in this book. And so it really gave me like a healing, very therapeutic, very much so. so um, uh, but it's about, in the book, it's about an interior designer who um, happens to find love at her front desk, um, who actually is uh, experiencing difficulty retrieving her mail. And so he takes it upon himself, um, the lead, uh, lead guy takes it upon himself to present her her mail. And um, it's entitled Mail on Thursday because he says, don't worry about it. I, you, you don't have to go through that trouble to receive your mail. I'll, I'll present you your mail. So from that, it formed a friendship and then a slowly an interest in the rest of, you know, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is awesome. And I can't wait to read that book. What about your second book? Tell us the name of your second book and tell us a little bit about it. Hostel Me Tati. That is the second title, and um, it, and that origin is a little unique as well because it's based on the Pride and the Prejudice. Uh, it's like my version of um, Pride and the Prejudice, and you know anyone that's read or familiar with Pride and the Prejudice knows that that's a big piece. But um, it is based in modern day society. Um, it's about a school teacher slash activist. <laughs> Uh, teaching in New York, um, teaching in, um, I believe, um, Manhattan, uh, teaching in uh, Manhattan, and um, she's very dedicated to her career, very driven by not just her career, uh, but also uh, driven by um, social justice. And so um, when she and when she finally happens to meet uh, one of the big, uh, you know, uh, big rich men of, you know, of of modern time, Mr. Aaron Darcy, their differences take over the pages. <laughs> right. Um, her, her, um, and she's very much inspired, like uh, by her father, um, who was also he he actually deceased. And so, um, when the book referenced her father, it's through you know, uh, you know, through the past. Um, but she's very concerned by those. Um, justices, uh, those, uh, those issues that affect, you know, people, particularly of brown and black, mm -hmm. um, he's very active in that area. So when a very, you know, hostile um, uh, Layla, Layla Benet meets a very arrogant and haughty uh, Aaron Darcy, their differences do take over. And it takes them a while before they start realizing that their methods their methods of uh, helping a community, their approaches are very different, and they're very able to kind of they're, 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 through unique set of circumstances, they're able to kind of you know um, kind of use the best of their strengths to kind of benefit the entire community. And so that one is really um, that's the totality of uh, that of that book, Hostel Meets Body. Wow. You are amazing. Your stories are amazing. And 
it's amazing. So I, right while you were talking this time, I went back to uh, the, the thought of you spending time in prayer and spending time fasting to hear from the Holy Spirit what to write. Um, and so that just took me back to that, you know, that part of the conversation. I just think that's so amazing. You know, the ideas and the things that, you know, that you use the word brew earlier, <laughs> you know, that brews up in you, you yeah. know, to get out. And so uh, it's great to hear how, how all of that works for you. So tell us about the name of your third book and then tell us a little bit about that book, please. The name of my third book is entitled A Mother's Christmas Gift. And um, a, a little earlier, um, I, I mentioned that it's my favorite. <laughs> it's my yes. personal favorite. Um, but um, it's called A Mother's Christmas Gift. And it's about a, a single mother slash attorney, um, uh, Sonny Mitchell, who is, I mean, she is a godsend. She is very much that uh, very pleasant, a uh, woman that we all might have kind of came across at some point in our lives uh -huh. who is she's like a staple to her family and to her community and so this year um she's been selected on the pta by excuse me by the pta to um um basically put be put in charge of the christmas play at her children's school she's a single mother of three children and so she's been put in charge, you know, put, put together a play, put together, you know, um, the Christmas uh, play for our school. And so, of course, you know, the, while the whole entire PTA is rooting for her, you know, she has a nemesis from high school that kind of still holds a little bit of a grudge just because of personal reasons. But um, she is that much of the, the reason I entitled it A Mother's Christmas Gift is because, you know, mothers today take on an enormous amount of tasks. They take on a, you know, they're here, they're everywhere, and they're there in 20 minutes, you know? Right. <laughs> you know, it, it's like this everyday drive, everyday um, obligation uh, that they have. And so, um, so her gift, it would happen to be um, none other than Mr. Brandon Nelson, who is, um, he, he's a former, um, uh, he's a former uh, schoolmate of hers slash, you know, boyfriend, high school, junior high. And, um, you know, he had a different path. He became later on in his life a Hollywood director, but he comes back to New York um, just in time for Christmas. And he's able to kind of see that she has this love for writing, you know? Right. And, um, and, and it's kind of been, that's, that's been the, um, he's able to pick up on that and they're able to kind of pick up where they left off years ago even in their adult years. So a uh, mother's Christmas gift, he was her gift. And um, yeah. in the passage, um, that's the part of the book, but mainly he encourages her, you know, you are a gift to everyone else. Who is your gift? What What is it that you are hoping for? And, yeah. and the running book in that particular book is that uh, she's related to Santa Claus, so. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, and your fourth book, what is the name of that? Um, and tell us a little bit about it. But before you do that, um, I don't know if you said it um, in this interview, but how that story makes you think about your mom the christmas story and how you know what i'm talking about yeah tell us about that um my you know um and thank you for asking ask, asking that um you is um it, it it was released on my mother's birthday so that book is definitely a book of significance for me my mom was someone that really shaped the holiday you know uh, our my love for it and and you know between the decorating and the shopping and the cooking like my mother made um she made the holidays just memorable and fun and festive and yeah you know, the, so the things that my memories 
on Christmas have always been that of joyful experiences and, and just, you know, and I still feel like a kid now when yeah. Christmas comes around. I mean, I'm still like, ooh, I still live, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that sound part of me will not go away. So, um, I mean, but she shaped the holiday season for me and, and not just me, but also, you know, uh, family growing up, she shaped that for uh, the three of us. And so um, having that experience and wanting to do something in her honor, um, I put it together and thankfully I was able to get it out on her birthday. That so, is amazing. Yeah, I wanted to just, you know, kind of keep her memory alive and just yes. to uphold the, the things that she uh, instilled in us. So I, it was really a tribute to my mother. And so I, I entitled that a mother's Christmas gift because my mother was truly a gift not just to her children, but to, you know, uh, people that she worked with, um, uh, her sisters, and, you know, everyone that came across her. So, yeah, she's definitely my, uh, uh, that's, my tri that's my tribute to her. That is so amazing. I absolutely love it. <laughs> okay, so now, um, please tell us about your fourth book, the name of it, and um, a little bit about it. Um, the fourth one, the current one I've written is called A Valentine's Therapy. And um, A Valentine's Therapy is very much, I feel like it's, I feel like it fits the time uh, that uh, we live in just because in terms of um, people that are in current points in their life that they never expected. Um, they, uh, you know, you sometimes we as human beings have a, a vision for ourselves and we like to we, we like to imagine where we are or where we would like to have been by a certain point and that's just not the case right. so my leading character outlook her outlook is fading and um and it's it, her her outlook on love and relationships because you know she she had sort of a you know her backstory has not been encouraging to to say the least and so her experiences in that department are really not encouraging. And so her outlook is suffering. She's not at a point in her life where she wants to be. And as a and and to make kind of matters worse, her estranged sister is getting married. Oh <laughs> wow! So <laughs> <laughs> right, just keep on putting salt to the wound. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but. Uh, but she saw so her outlook is suffering. Her, her, you know, her whole thought toward it is starting to just take a terrible direction that I, I don't think she could have even saw. But um, it's entitled The Valentine's Therapy because um, she happens to, her, not just through her friends, but through uh, the help of a next door neighbor who happens to be um, what we call nowadays a YouTube celebrity. He yeah. is um, he kinda helps he kinda helps her see things from a different perspective. And I wanted to highlight um what perspective is because perspective is everything. Um and I've I've been learning so much about that in just you know recent years and and so her perspective receives a boost out of as a result of you know and she's able to go after her dreams as an author she's able to you know put aside differences with her sister and be there at her wedding um and so you know there's definitely a shift it's one it's it's a short i, I want to say out of the four it's the shortest one that i've done but it just but it holds all of those compelling components um, wow. to give it you know to give it, um, you know, the boost in, in terms of perspective and, and you know, reevaluation. And so that would be the fourth and uh, current book we have, yes. Wow. You are amazing. Your story is amazing. Your books are amazing. And I'm so honored and have the, ple you know, to have the pleasure to, um, to interview you. Uh, I really am, and I pray that, you know, as a result of this interview and just as a result of the things that God is doing in your life, that you 
are able to, you know, that many people read your book, you know, your books, um, and that you continue to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and to direct you into writing, um, and that you allow him to use you because giving hope is a big part of why I do the things that I do to give others hope, to inspire them, to encourage them. And it just means so much to me to be able to do that. Um, and so thanks again for coming on the show uh, and for allowing me to interview you. Now tell us where we can get these books. Okay. Well, um, all four books are available on Amazon.com and they're available in both formats of paperback as well as Kindle, and okay. uh, but um, and yesterday, you know, um, you know, God did something for me, and I'm still trying to process it. But um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm still trying to process it. But you know, I, um, but God blessed me um, to have my uh, current book, A Valentine's Therapy, available. The paperback version is only available on Barnes and Noble. And wow. Those, yes, ma'am. Those are the um, two outlets where you can uh, purchase those books. And um, and so, yes, it, it's been a blessing. And if, and if I could just add, um, Barnes & Noble was a place of where I could get my, uh, another place that I could receive inspiration and kind of subtract away from everything that I was facing uh, years ago. Yes. Um, I would sit at Barnes and Noble for hours. And so the fact that um, to have my book on their website, it just was like, my God. <laughs> and yeah, God did something for me. And I just was like, my God, I didn't, I didn't expect that. And so, but those are the two outlets, um, two websites where you can make those purchases and you can purchase them again through paperback or uh, Kindle for all the e-readers. <laughs> okay. So tell us one more time, all of the names, the all four names of books. Okay. The first one is entitled Mail on Thursday. And the second is entitled Hostel Meet Potty. And the third one is called A Mother's Christmas Gift. And um, the fourth one is called A Valentine's Therapy. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you so much. And so, guys, go out and get these books. Purchase these books. I encourage you to. Um, he gave us uh, some information on all of the books and what to look forward to in reading those books. Thank you, Stephen, for this opportunity to interview you. And I look forward to talking to you again um, about your books and about more about your writing uh, and the writing process. Um, so thanks again for joining me on Love Misunderstood Online Book Club. Thank you. And thank you for what you are doing for authors. It's truly a blessing. And I just thank you so much. The honor is mine. Thank you, Stephen. Bye for now.